Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of PKM Weekly and Merry Christmas to everyone and let's see what's been in store for us from the past week. So first up is Thymer, so from the back to the front and it really does exist in the sense that just before Christmas on 23rd of December the devs announced that Thymer Alpha was ready and it is an invite only at this stage um, so it's not open to everyone for the time being and if you haven't received an invite on your Twitter DMs or emails for the time being, just make sure you follow Wim and Diedrich, uh, links are here on Twitter, and just nicely ask them for an invite code, and they're usually quite responsive to getting a code out to people. And on top of that, uh, if you follow the unofficial Discord, the devs are very active in that one, uh, posting responsives, ask, answering any questions, giving some thoughts and ideas, as well as submitting a handful of invites at various different occasions. So well worthwhile having a look at those ones if you haven't already. And just to give you a quick idea of how it looks. So you start up, you've got various different pages on, on the side or collections that you can create and some are already active. So for example, the journal one, just Saturday is here. You can scroll through the various different days. You can create some properties. So this is a choice one. This is a text one. This is another text one as well. And this should disappear, this notification of every property being edited. You can write, do some outlining as well. Indent, outdent, etc. And various different other things through the command palette, headings, numbered lists, quotes, code block, number block, note block, blah, blah, blah. A lot of other things that you can do as well in terms of uploading images and videos. And the cool thing is you can create different views. So there's just a quick view that I created for the journals. So you can see here a bit of a database that you can create with any properties that you want. And any properties that you do create will then just appear on the page of each journal. And just to give you a sense of how that looks in a bit more detailed, this is a book library that I have. So you can sort it, for example, on the date started. You can sort it on the author, a few clicks of a button. You can also filter it or query it. So if we do authors equals just Grisham, so you can see that's just pulled up the Grisham authors that I have going on here. Uh, it does have formulas as well and uh, they are live based on the selection. So that was 14,000 and if we go here 63,000 or give or so. And what you can also then do is you can configure the tables with then adding various different properties so you can create them and then just hide them or make them visible. And for example, if we just look at the banner one that I created, you can then have the book cover as well. So very intuitive, very easy to use and a pleasure to write in. And just to give you a quick idea of the speed, if we just go to, for example, this one here and I just scroll down so you can see it's scrolling through every page quite quickly as well. Obviously the pages are quite empty at this moment in time because I've only imported a few key things just to give it a try, but you get the idea of how things look. You can then do dashboards, um, you can then even do plugins as well, which you can create yourself, but there are a lot of other things that I will do a more in-depth video on in due course. So hopefully everyone will get an invite or they will get access to it shortly. Uh, even though it's just been released, the devs do have a high-level roadmap, um, fix alpha bugs obviously, so there are quite a number of bugs that have been reported in the Discord so far, and I'm sure the devs will create a more proper uh, bug reporting system in due course, but that's their next task. Uh, release a self-hosted sync version injectable, create some desktop apps, Windows, Macs, Mac OS and Linux, as well as look at the mobile Part. So for the time being, at least on Android, I don't know about iOS, but you can access your notes just by going through the web browser. So it is quite easy to see your notes and edit them, although obviously it's not been optimized for mobile yet. There have been a few updates as well, um, just over the last few days. So uh, there was a bit of a discussion on how the outline behaves, and the devs just recently implemented a bit of a change through the experimental means, uh, bug fixes and other non-bugs that they're working on. And just to give you an idea of the possibilities that you can do with Thymer. So it's just been released, as I say, four days ago. And Ricardo has already prepared 
something quite cool in terms of an inbox. So it's pulling things in from GitHub, I believe, in this case. And you can also then do various different other things with Readwise as well, which you posted a few things here in terms of getting your Readwise to link into Thymer already. So a lot of things going on. Some of it is a little bit overwhelming, so you do need to take a little bit of a step back and just get to grips with it. But it is a joy to use and very easy to get started once you have access, of course. Um, next up is Obsidian, so version 1.11.2 that's been released for desktop and mobile, uh, various different fixes which are included here, so fix the bug, fix minor visual regressions, uh, when navigation is hidden, swiping down will trigger views, and various different other things that the devs have implemented. Um, Kipano is also looking at shaving time, for every millisecond um, off the app he's looking into what can be done. And he does mention in one of his Twitter posts that he's got about 17,000 knots and um, he's trying to get it to open even quicker than 500 milliseconds. Um, and every single release, they're looking into doing that more and more because they are aware that every single time it stops or it doesn't load up automatically, the thought can be lost or you just lose your chain of thought. So something definitely worthwhile to keep an eye on. Um, how to take book notes in a practical workflow, so effortlessly, effortless notes and quotes. Uh, so Wonderlux created a video where they share their workflow on how to effortlessly take notes in Obsidian. So definitely worthwhile checking this video out as well. And then there was a couple of interesting posts um, in Reddit, which obviously I forgot one of the links here, but Obsidian shutting down. Um, over the, I'm not sure where this came from, but over the past few days I keep seeing Reddit talking about a scenario of Obsidian not existing someday. Uh, it's an app you can download, you can have it on your computer, so as long as you have your computer you can always have it at some stage, but I don't think Obsidian will disappear so quickly. And the other quite cool question was, how has your use of Obsidian evolved over time? So definitely worthwhile checking these two posts out when you have a moment. Um, capacities, I didn't see this before, but they've released Capacities Docs, which I thought was quite cool. So how it basically works. So they're getting started, the tutorials of how you can use capacities, the features, the references, and it is a very easy to use um, document repository. So very nice, and hopefully other apps can take ideas from it as well. And if it was created before, apologies, I just didn't realize. And query for tasks by their context. So one of the questions in Discord was, is there a way to query for tags by this context? Um, I want to query tasks that are not part of a project, various different other things, and the devs have responded with, yes, this is planned, and it will come with our next release, or one of the next releases. So, great to see that some of the task management feature, which was just recently released, they are looking already to update. Uh, Tana, they did the 2025 recap, so it's been a big year. Uh, they've launched a lot of things and did a number of things in the community as well. Um, and last up was the founder AMA with Olav. And on top of that, they are very close to being the product of the year on Product Hunt. So if you haven't already done so, they are asking everyone to please cast their votes, give an upvote as they are... Uh, 1702, about 62 or so uh, votes behind being number one app of the year. So if you haven't already and you have time to spare, I'm sure the devs and the team would really appreciate a like. Uh, another one was impressed with Tana and question regarding historical databases of dates. So OP is just asking, what's the best way for me to keep um, a hard track of the dates that I have that I want in my Tana space? So if you are in the same boat, definitely worthwhile checking out this Reddit post from the OP and seeing what other people say as well. Logseek, uh, Danzu did a complete walkthrough of the Logseek DB version on iOS. So in the video he covers user interface, settings, graph management, outlining and views, quick add features and audio recording. It's definitely worthwhile having a look through his Hello there. So video and he you goes through quite a lot of detail in depth so you can see how the have. iOS app um, is shaping up and it's going to be very similar from what I understand to the Android app once that's released. So at least you can get an idea of the apps on that one. Um, the devs have also looked at removing the internal Git backup for a more automatic backup to your notes, I'm guessing, or to a repository, um, to a director on your computer. So you can do that through the automatic backup um, just to make it a little bit more robust. And a couple of interesting posts in Reddit again for Logseek was that unfortunately this week 
a lot of people said they are looking to move away from Logseek. So what are you planning to replace Logseek with? And I've had enough. So these, uh, there's quite a number of comments on them. So if you're in the same boat, maybe worthwhile having a look at them and seeing what other users are saying. Octarine, they released version 0.31.1, uh, writing assistant. So no longer requires a note. You can do quick actions, you can edit prompts, as well as a lot of other things and ask Octarine uh, design, design and layout changes, uh, suggested actions and history. And there's a lot more that has been posted through the Discord change log, which you can have a look through here, as well as a few videos of what the updates mean. And in fact, a few hours ago, they've also released a hotfix. So constantly evolving project, project. So well done Rajat on that one. Heptabase, they've been a few updates on this one as well. So whiteboards, AI, action for cards so you can basically use AI on cards themselves now um, I think that's what it means so just looking at the video here create the card and then AI will create it for you so a very intuitive thing that Heptabase have introduced uh, a few other things as well and if you want to see a video of why Tom from the paperless movement believes that hey everybody today one that will kill notebook LM and mem Check out this video and see his thoughts on it as well. Noti, there was no releases for the past week, but they are expected a release in the early uh, couple of weeks of January with some things, perfect markdown import, bi-directional conversation, conversion even, uh, connection line support, transcripts, configurable, interval, and many other things as well. If you're interested in an analytics dashboard for reader, from Readwise, check this out from OP. Um, they went and built a dashboard for the reading velocity, streaks, pipeline metrics, and highlight patterns. A very interesting and intuitive thing that has been built. And you can see the full details here on Reddit. So if you're interested uh, and you can open um, source it and self-host it as well. And there was a three, three big and many small upgrades to the reader mobile experience. Um, just to make the tablet and the iPad reading a lot smoother, and you can see the video from one. So this is it. We think we've it means in terms of the updates. We've also added. And that was it for this week. So thank you very much for being here, and I shall see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.